Welcome back, Bio 178. Let's continue on to the next topic in behavioral ecology. And here we're going to start to talking, excuse me, start talking about sex bias dispersal and specifically the ways we can determine whether that's happening or not using population level analyses. So what is sex bias dispersal, first of all? We'll let you think about that for a little bit first on your own, based on what you know about dispersal, based on what you know about the name, maybe what you've read in the textbook. So overall, what sex bias dispersal is, so dispersal is individuals moving between populations, right? So you have population one, population two, dispersal is when we have individuals moving between those populations, right? And sex bias dispersal means that those individuals moving maybe are more often one sex than the other. So maybe it's only females that are moving between and males are staying close to home and aren't dispersing. So that's what sex bias dispersal means. And just in terms of the terminology, when we, you'll see in the textbook and what we'll talk about throughout this lecture, is we'll use the terms male bias dispersal or female bias dispersal. So what that means is when you use the term male bias dispersal, that means males are the ones that are moving in between populations more than females and vice versa. Female bias dispersal means females are the ones that are moving in between populations. And it's important for us to know about sex bias dispersal and whether it's happening or not because it can have important implications for evolution and it can also give us information about important things like the spread of diseases and the spread of adaptive genetic variation which we talked about previously is important for conservation for instance. So in this first example here what they found is they were looking at raccoons and they found based on the genetic data, males are actually more likely to cross frozen rivers, which is illustrated here. And so what that means is that males are more likely to spread the raccoon variant of rabies. So that's what I mean by the spread of diseases here. This can help us inform whether rabies is being spread. It's specifically the males that are doing that spreading because they're the ones that are moving more often than females. The other example that's shown here is with bonnet head sharks and they also in this system found evidence for male bias dispersal meaning that males are the ones moving around and this also means that males are the ones that are facilitating movement of potentially adaptive genetic variation between locations and environments so in this case it's especially important for us to make sure we're conserving males because they're the ones that are spreading this adaptive genetic variation that's important for populations to be able to adapt to changing environments. So of course this is a molecular ecology class so what we'll talk about in this module is how we can use genetic data to identify whether sex bias dispersal is happening or not. And there are two different general types of analyses we can do. Population type analyses where we're looking at individuals within that population as a whole and also individual level analyses. And so we'll focus on the population level analyses in this video and the individual ones in the next video. So one of the first population level ways we can investigate whether sex bias dispersal is happening or not is calculate something we've talked about previously, which is FST. So remember we talked about FST values before when we were discussing dispersal, which makes sense. This is also talking about dispersal, but in this context, we're trying to figure out if it's different for males or females. So what we can do when we're talking about it within this sex bias dispersal context is calculate FST separately for males and females. So in this example here, we have this female here and a male here. So what we would do is calculate one FST value for all the males in the population and another FST value for all the females in the population. Then we could compare them and see whether they are different. Remember an FST value that is small indicates that individuals are genetically similar to each other that would indicate that there is gene flow occurring that would make them more similar. Gene flow is 
only happening if there's dispersal, right? So here's an example here. This was in the white browed sparrow weaver. And what they did is calculate FST values for males versus females. And they have the data shown here in table one. And let's focus on this column here, the FST value. So we're comparing males and females. So if we look at the FST value for males, it's 0.15. The FST value for females is 0.2. The FST value for females is higher, which means females are more genetically different from each other. What that means is that females are the ones that are staying closer to where they were born. They are not moving between populations, whereas males with a lower FST value indicate they are having higher gene flow between populations, which means they are dispersing. So a higher FST value for females indicates males are the ones that are moving, indicates male bias dispersal. So another way to phrase that is that a lower FST value for males indicates male bias dispersal is happening. Another way we can do these popul level, population level type of analyses is to determine relatedness. And what we can do is look at a group of individuals, a population, we can compare all of the males to each other, all of the females to each other and determine whether their relatedness is different. So in this example here with a herd of elephants, for instance, elephant females generally form these herds where the females stay with each other for, so they can have multiple generations of females within a single herd. And what that means is the relatedness of those females is going to be very high. In contrast, if you look at a male elephant in a herd, his relatedness to other males is going to be relatively low because he likely immigrated in from a different population. That would indicate male bias dispersal is happening. So here's an example. They've looked at this in several, in bobcats from several different geographic locations. That's what these different references are. They're doing the same type of relatedness study, but in different locations. And here, what they found is that there was a higher relatedness in female bobcats. We're calculating this relatedness using something called an R value. A higher R value indicates higher relatedness. And so if we look at this graph here on the bottom right, we'll note a couple things here. The Y axis is the R value. Again, a higher R value means individuals are more related to each other. And if we look here, first of all, if we compare females to the entire population or males to the entire population, we see that relatedness is roughly the same. So that doesn't really give us any useful information. But if we compare all females to other females or all males to other males, we start to see a difference here. So here for females, we see they have a relatedness value of about 0.05, whereas males have a relatedness value of, that looks like it's actually negative, negative 0.075. And so what this means is that if females are more relate, closely related to other females within the group, I don't know what a group of bobcats is called. If females are more closely related to each other, that means they're staying close to where they were born Whereas in contrast, the relatedness values for males are low, which means those males came from a bunch of different other populations. They immigrated in, they moved there from somewhere else. So because the males have a lower relatedness value, that indicates there's male bias dispersal happening. Males are moving between populations, females are staying where they were born, and therefore they have, they're more related to the other females surrounding them.